So yesterday, Saturday, uh, I was at my mom's house and she was asking, um, you know, what's going on in your life? And as usual, I, uh, I started with uh, elaborating on the things that are concerning uh, my brain um, at the moment. And that's related to um, certain machine learning algorithms, reinforcement learning, Q learning in particular, um, Markov decision processes for which I, I might make a video in the future because there are some topics, especially in machine learning, where it seems there's literally no book uh, that, while theorems are usually cited, they're not like explained in any usable way uh, or in any believable way, let's say. I know that, you know, if you search around enough, then you find, oh, people have actually concerned themselves with the justification for various convergence properties. And there's some nice you know, function analysis proofs that are quite believable. But if you have, if you look into any machine learning book, it appears to me that there is, there's literally no like, like uh, justification that would, um, that would satisfy me. And I was like, okay, uh, there's some uh, things that I don't understand. And, uh, but, but, you know, I, I know that I'm, I'm in the position to understand this, this sort of proofs and I, uh, I might do the world a favor and actually put them into to video and present them here. Um, and so I was, uh, concerned with that and, um, as is usually the case, uh, there are some, some simpler examples that I can put into a separate video that sort of motivates the thing and then the functional analysis like um, discussion of the Q-learning algorithms um, will be in a separate video and then I will refer back to this and it will make sense. And so my, my mother asked me, you know, what, I, what I'm doing and I start to like try to motivate, you know, this, this machine learning stuff. and. Um, I sort of start to explain to her this one-armed bandit casino problem that we will discuss in this video. And in this video, we will see some uh, PyTorch uh, solutions of these sort of problems as well. Um, and she uh, looks at me and, you know, I'm paraphrasing here, but she's like, you know, I find it amazing that you can get so motivated um, with this useless <laughs> shit <laughs> and she was very like like uh, she literally said like you know and why I, I would never go to a casino and even then you know i would never like start doing the math and i, I, I was like in defensive mode you know you know what is this is you know this is just this sort of semantic motivation for the problem it's just an abstraction and this is used in like advertisement is this is used a lot and and um, and you know the the problem like translates to this machine learning problem blah blah blah, blah. and uh, then I, I got into this this defensive position basically like having to argue why this is like practical for like for some potential job that you would do which you know i hate this sort of argument myself and so but i, I know exactly that she would also not you know accept it if i just say you know it's just interesting and and sort of inter like even elusive in a way, you know, when you're dealing with future rewards and then there's some probabilistic theorem that sort of justifies something which might be unexpected. And, <laughs> um, and yeah, I, uh, I think I, I lost that debate with my mom, but I know that the, the sick, the sick people that watch this video who are just as sick as me and can enjoy the math even for itself to understand. Uh, what's going on there um, and maybe have in the back of our mind that they might ap apply this to somewhere you know you guys you don't need a justification <laughs> so we will just hop into the topic um, as, it, if, as if it was evident why this is like super important and uh, to understand and learn <laughs> okay so introductory rent is over i put the timestamp in um, at the bottom of the video that here starts the new the real video okay um i will describe the setup you know the the semantics of it that motivate the problem the probability theory problem i will talk in terms of this casino problem 
and in the next few minutes you must be listen up a maybe a little bit more than in the rest of the video to actually follow um the the problem that, that we have here at hand and to like see and accept why there are different um, goals and, and solutions and you might even understand the solutions up front and then we will do some analytic uh, solution in a sense I mean it's almost too easy to I can't just describe the algorithm and we will see an, an implementation and uh, if anything that this video helps you also to see how the typical use of the PyTorch machine learning library can be used to replace some parts in the analytical algorithm solving the same sort of problem Okay, so we have to deal with this one arm bandits. That's sort of the pun name for this um, for these machines, where you pull uh, once and then you get a certain reward, right? So there's there's the slot machines, and I, I mean I will abstract away exactly from how this works with this free rolling bars or whatnot. We will just see this as a machine where you you take an action if you pull then you get a reward you get some a number of chips let's say out of it right so um in the algorithm that we will uh, in the end uh, go through i have here some some magic uh, numbers these these numbers are uh, auxiliary you can change them to any number but what i have here is there's one room with these machines in this one room there's 10 of the machines and when you pull you get a maximum out of 10 chips um, there will be some uh, random function you know here above there is this casino implementation this you can think of as this casino which has these rooms which has these machines and then um, when you play then you get certain rewards you can see here the implementation that we're going to use it has some probabilistic aspect to it and um, we will um, have uh, we will look at two or three algorithms you know these implementations two manual or analytic approaches and one machine learning approach that um, mirrors the situation where you can come to the casino right let's say um, you are allowed to pull three thousand times this is also what I call here epochs maybe that's not the best name in this case but the, 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 you could also call this trials you know, I could call this tri uh, trial um, trial by which I mean uh, or pulls you know you pull from the machine 3000 times and now um, the, the assumption is that these machines each have some underlying distribution um, regarding the rewards that they will uh, put out so in this picture here this is just googled um, th this is a typical problem you find in in some of these uh, reinforcement learning um, books at the beginning because it's like sort of nice and contained and has some uh, analytical uh, possibilities uh, to solve it or speaking of which uh, let me digress for a second um, for some more harder math you know it is really explained in a bunch of uh, books but uh, i found this um also just googling around right this um, page uh, on a lecture series by yuan Su, if i pronounce this correctly um which has uh you know bunch of like hard math theorems regarding this um where uh it, I have not studied this here, but it looks quite appealing. It, he describes some algorithms, some objectives, and um, what you get out of it, and then how you can compare the... the you know, this is just pure probability theory. Um, this is just a recommendation if you want to know more about this stuff. Okay, so um, the, the assumption is that there is some underlying uh, probability distribution and that these machines and that's part of the assumption of the of this situation here, it, that these machines are not all the same. Some have, um, let's say, uh, a higher average reward when you pull them, Yeah, right? If you go to one machine and pull 100 times, then some machine uh, might here in this picture, for example, uh, or oh, this is like, okay, sorry, you don't see the yellow one, but here even, even this green one, um, the... I don't know if this is probably the median um, reward obtained from this uh, machine 
is higher, you know, the, 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 this line here, this white line is a little bit more to the right. Uh, then for example, here for this machine number three, D3, the, um, the distribution of what you typically get if you pull, um, you know, uh, statistically speaking, is higher here than high, uh, than here, right? And so in this sense, some machines are better than others with regards to you maximizing the reward, the chips that you get out of it. You know, if you knew the distributions here, then it's clear that you would probably um, pull this um, D4 machine uh, over this D3 machine simply because it has a like more favorable um, distribution. And so the the n arm bandit problem is you come into this room, you have n machines, you don't know uh, uh, a priori like what the underlying distributions are, um, and you have a limited number of pulls that you can do. Like in this case, I will use the number 3000 because it's the time in which the algorithm uh, runs uh, quickly enough, the training. And now the question is, how do you approach the situation, right? So, I mean, one idea, what you could do, what this is a bad idea is, you say, okay, I just go to the first machine and pull it 3000 times. Then you will get basically 3000 times the average return of this. Right? So if your 3000 is a high enough number, you the statistic will average uh, itself out. You get the average for the machine that you have randomly chosen out of the 10. Okay, but um, it seems clear that you can do better than that, right? So for example, one strategy that we will not implement, but it's easy explained is, okay, you know you have 3000 pulls. What you will do is you use your first 150, let's say, to figure out um how uh these machines behave you know to to have an empirical estimate of, of which one is better than the other and then you use your other 2850 on the best machine so for example you come to the room you say okay my first 150 i will quote unquote throw flow, uh, throw away i use the first machine then the second then the third then the and so on uh, so you use every machine 15 times and then from the 15, you you build an average for each machine. You say, oh, this machine number seven was actually better uh, by like 0 0.5 uh, average return than machine one. And so from now on for the remaining 2,850 pulls, I will just use machine seven. This is one approach. It will probably give you a better um, reward than you just go to the first machine where you do not explore. This is basically a technical term. Okay. and. So now you can see that there's obviously a lot of uh, things you can do, right? So there is, um, I, I said, you know, I fixed 150 and explored all of them, but you can also do explorations where uh, you sample the, the exploration um, strategy, the, like the, the trials um, differently than just going from one to the next, right? You can um, keep on, um, yeah, if it if it uh, during your exploration phase during the first 150, for example, it turns out that one is significantly worse than the other by half a standard deviation or whatnot, then you can say, okay, now I cut this. I will not use any more trials on this first, on this machine, which s just seems to be um, like from the from the empirical uh, uh, gain knowledge gain knowledge knowledge gain. Um, it seems to be worse, so I, I will just dismiss this and and pretend there's just nine machines and and I do whatever there's now so you can you know there's a million pol uh, policies that you can develop there and we are going to look at two manual search policies and another policy which incorporates some machine learning so here you have another um, image that I just googled right here you see somebody just iterating um, over different machines and trying to uh, keep track of uh, what the the underlying uh, keep track of what the estimated mean is and the underlying mean so it seems that in this explanation on this web page I suppose six was the underlying mean and you know I say mean or median it doesn't really matter much you try to estimate what the best um, machine is given the reward so whatever statistic you use to describe um, the difference between the machines it doesn't really matter it will be clear that one machine gives you more rewards and then there's a lot of statistics which um, are monotone in the sense that they, they, they will work um, figuring out like you, you see what what works best and what not right 
Okay. Um, so, with that said, uh, let's uh, jump into the, the algorithm. So, uh, I will in one minute quickly skim through the algorithm, then I will show you a plot and then we will um, I will show you a little bit more details um, what the implementation is and you as you always you find it in the gist below um, you can like, copy it and play around with it I suppose if there's anything you gain from the from the um, video assuming you do some some coding it's that you can have this very nicely um, like concise uh, algorithm starter that you can uh, take and develop and you can play around with the with the uh, PyTorch ML routine as well. So there is uh, a very basic linear algebra implementation stuff that I've literally just copied from my previous video on finite absorbing Markov chains. I will not explain this, just some path function. Likewise, uh, there are some probability theory at theoretic functions. Um, I will not even use all of them. So I will not use, for example, this run that I used for the Markov chain example. Uh, they are just here and I use some of, some of these functions on this page. There is uh, some new uh, function in this class which I call choice. Uh, the first one is just the argmax, argmax function. It takes a list of comparable elements and gives you the index back of the uh, maximal element with respect to the, the order. In this case it's just integers, no, it's just floating numbers. And then there's two functions that I will come back to. These are used to in, in as part of the choice um, of the action, what to perform in this room of machines. There is the casino implementation, which is a collection of rooms where each room is a collection of a fixed number of these machines. And there's this uh, play method where you, if you do, um, pull uh, an arm, then you get a random reward. Here you already see the implementation of um, how this is done, how the randomness is sort of encoded there based on just some, you know, some uh, matrix or list of uh, probabilities that are sample at the beginning. And then there's this first routine, uh, which um, tries to get maximum reward uh, over 3000 rounds. You know, there's a loop over 3000 uh, trials or epochs, with how they're called here. And then there's the same uh, goal solving algorithm, but it uses like 20 lines of PyTorch sets up uh, this simple um, this simple uh, network. You can you know, tweak this around. You can, this doesn't really matter. This is such a simple problem that, um, I don't know, 100, uh, uh, like one layer with 100 um, floats will suffice to solve that. Um, but you can extend this and, you know, <laughs> generalize as you wish. There's this training step that is not there in the, um, in the other manual approach, as I call it, there's um, some plot, plot function, which I will not explain. Um, and then finally, there is me hard coding these uh, magic numbers, showing you what the underlying probabilities are that are used to generate the re rewards. And then I run these three versions to solve it, and then I plot it. Um, that's the algorithm, that's a script. And so I run this once, okay? And there will be this free method solving the, the, the problem. It, it takes a little bit because the machine learning uh, routine learns um, how to uh, estimate probabilities on, based on which it makes the decisions. And here you see the outcome of one sample. Uh, I have experience, you know, I have run this a kind of bunch of times that the, especially the, the machine learned one is very um, like unpredictable in how it will end up. But here you see these two methods, w one I called here uh, explore. This is some sort of greedy epsilon algorithm to find out um, what the underlying probabilities are. And based on that makes the pulls. And the line that you get is the actual rewards that you, you get. So um, I'm, I'm plotting here. Um, oh, I'm running out of battery again. Okay, super. Um, um, uh, here, uh, this is the underlying uh, probabilities for for the um, 10 machines. And you see uh, there's like a high number which determines uh, high reward. So this will end up basically giving you a over on a average over eight 
um, over eight uh, chips per pull on the seventh um, on the seventh arm in the room and so the best strategy would be to just pull seven but of course you don't know the, the that is the sevens at the start so you have to explore and then there, there's some exploration phase and what you can see here is this these manual algorithms uh they get to some um state where they uh you know pull a good number by the way this is an a smoothed curve that's why it's um that's why it's like floating point numbers but you see the algorithms with time like after the 2000s pull or so they are uh, already there that they, that they um in this smoothed plot on average get around seven which is fairly high um um chips out of it and in, in this case you see that the machine learning algorithm actually underperforms even after the 3000 trials like even you know the machine learning algorithm here it does the learning um while this goes goes on and the other ones do some probabilistic exploring and pulling the good the the best estimated um machine in this case the f not only do the the manual ones converge to some seemingly good solution good approach very early but they are all continuously higher in this case and this is you know this is not um the approaches uh, to estimating the underlying probability but for these two approaches are very different the machine learning algorithm tries to set some weights um, some hundred weights that sort of encode the information whereas the these one are basically the analytical solutions they, they work with the calculating the proper mean um, so it should not surprise you too much that the machine learning one underperforms here if I don't give it enough like space and uh, I do uh, do a tra give it a training time uh, just as long as it needs for me to run this script here nicely, right? So I um, run it again. Okay, I clear this, and I have experience. Like I've run this a bunch of times, and the plots tend to be um, you know all over the place. So sometimes this and this works better than than that and that, um, but uh, so be it. So in this case, the ninth, uh, so the last machine is the best one again with over eight um, and in this case we have a similar result now I think the last uh, one I pulled um, the explore one was actually better but you see here it's also interesting that um, there's some uh, wiggling especially at the start here um, so it really takes a while to even get over five right right so this um, machine learning uh, process in this case really underperforms okay here so in this case the second one is the best one with uh, 0 0.94 uh, uh, probability number and in this case it just happens to be that the machine learning um, algorithm actually exceeds in the end the um, the softmax approach in this case. So this is the, the plots you um, get out of it. You really only have to do, uh, you know, pip install PyTorch, pip install PyTorch, I think. And um, then you get the, the library and you see then this 10 line implementation and you can just download it or copy it, the code. It's, you know, it's not even 300 lines and play around with it and, you know, you can, uh, I've commented this out now, but you can uh, change the network and see how it behaves differently. I mean, the problem is so easy that the analytical solutions are stronger in this case, but nevertheless, it might be fun to, to play around with it. Okay, so uh, I'm running out of battery. I'm at 6% and I don't see any warning from my recording software, but I will cut this video really short. I think the main message is, is gained. So... Um, what we have here is these choice functions, right? So what both algorithms do, the the manual algorithms, but also the machine learning algorithms, is um, it it learns uh, to make a choice, but only indirectly. What it really learns is the probabilities. It, it, it learns some numbers, and in this case, they are closest to something like the average reward you get. Uh, some monotone function, monotone depending on uh, what the best rewards so far were from different machines. If these numbers, these probabilities for certain machine is higher than from another machine, and it means 
you better pull this lever because it seems empirically that so far this machine was better than the other. So it learns the probability and this is very close to in general to this Q learning approach and the algorithm that I actually want to get at maybe in a future video, um, which is part of reinforcement learning as you see here. And earlier, like bef before the machine learning craze uh, in the Markov decision process world, you have similar, um, you know, similar ideas. It's basically the similar, f the same formulas and theorems were translated from this Markov stuff to, to machine learning. Yeah. Okay. Um, now the I will get. Um, it seems like my the recording software uh, gets uh, hangs up, and I cannot really in under a minute plug in the <laughs> the power cable because I have to use this stupid dongle because I'm not a MacBook. Um, but uh, okay, so I I will just say this. Um, there is this these choice functions were given Jesus. <laughs> given um, some list of probabilities you can see here how it de determine it determines um, what uh, action to take one is an this greedy epsilon approach where with a certain probability you do a random choice and otherwise you just take whatever is best in this list of probabilities, right? Again, the probabilities represent the average reward that you estimate. And the other one is the soft max, where you just sample what to pull also based on this list, but also probabilistically with the weights that the list rep represent, except you even take the soft max of it. Um, you see here what a soft max is, is. If you don't know, then you should really Google it up because it's like everywhere, but this is just sampling based on the probabilities, not with like, this sort of yes, no, hard epsilon approach, but another way of choosing um, one of the arms based on the estimated probabilities. Okay, and as you would imagine, the manual uh, process um, runs through the trials or epochs, and um, you keep track of the means, right? You keep track of the, uh, the counts how much you pl uh, how much you um, pulled and and then basically you you might keep track of the the, the estimated average for all of the different um, probabilities for the arms this is called Q here and I have the the running mean being computed here right this is just the the updating the average right you have an average so far you get some new data then um, you multiply this by all the trials that you had so far, and you add the new data, and then you normalize it again. So there's this, what I call uh, learning rate, because I, I already cast it in the language that they will use in the future um, video uh, scenario. So back to this Q learning page, the Q learning um, algorithm is a variant of this. So you have also this learning rate there. But in that case, you also have this um, discount of future probabilities, and that's where the fancy convergence theorems that I actually want to talk about come in. Um, and yeah, you you um, you take your choice based on the previous, the current estimate of the average um, average output of these machines, and that's the manual approach. That's where the manual curves come from. I use the greedy explore algorithm and the softmax is where this blue and green plots and then there's a machine learning routine that uh, uh, does the same thing except there is this this uh, this average um, manual average uh, keeping track of is not there at all but instead there is this network there I set up the network here you see it here there's this network um, and it internally has some mystical, you know, layer, one layer representation of whatever it does there. And um, if you query it, if you query this, this network, this model, um, w you know, you have to set up the optimizer for learning. You have to set up a loss function to, to say how far are you off, which is just the, basically the, di the distance to um, what you... Uh, upfront estimate and what you actually got 
Um, and then you can query the model, what are your estimates, Q. These are like, like I, I didn't define th that this should represent the means, but there are like um, these 10 numbers that it automatically learns is the output of the model, Q, this Q. Um, and th then just as before, based on this, I do, um, I make a choice. I think I use also the softmax function there on this output of the network that it you know, just decides what whatever it wants to learn. It, it learns just based on what I tell it was the error of what it predicted versus what, uh, what I actually got as a reward. And since the reward at each iteration is also randomly sampled, this is uh, also just probabilistic, right? Uh, the, the, it, it could also be that you get a, a, a reward which is uh, very far off from the mean and in that way you would learn something wrong but I mean that's just what happens if you have this probabilistic situation yeah? on average you will learn the correct thing on average you will learn to make the, the correct prediction you, you will um, minimize the difference between uh, what you random sample and what you predict when you call this model thing and so a lot of the code is just encoding the data. So here, for example, here is uh, the quote unquote actual reward of this iteration. Uh, and you uh, say oh, there is, there's a difference between what you predicted Q and what is, what's the actual reward. And you encode just in this, in this index slot, or oh, you're, you're so and so much off. Uh, and so here in each iteration, you run uh, this uh, dot step, which is the API for you know, for the learning. You know, you you propagate the information back, and then you do the step, and then you it updates its weight. I have a video on machine learning um, in Python, like pure Python, on my video. If you don't know anything about it, um, and so this just through this standard uh, Relo network, as you, as you saw above, learns to make the to predict this Q and the, the emphasis is that this is just what is analog to learning the mean probability above and in this way you you find out which arm is better over time by by trial and error and yeah that's pretty much it <laughs> okay so uh, if you have any questions I know you know I sort of cut it short I'm happy I'm in done in just half an hour um, I hope what you see how and what, for what kind of things you can use this these are this algorithms which learn probabilities um, I call the variable Q which because it's very close to these Q learning uh, algorithms based on which you can then make decisions in um, in this case in this soft max sort of manner but you see what the, that it's sort of interesting to consider that what you learn is actually some property of this environment or of these machines um, and only based on that you make you code in what how to make the decision based on soft max function in this case and that's how the machine, you know, the artificial intelligence, um, makes uh, comes to a conclusion based, you know, based on this iteratively estimate of what the environment is. Okay, and uh, I don't discuss it in this video, but this the code is actually also coded up in a way that you can generalize this a little bit. You can um, you can add states in this case rooms, right? So with just uh, changing up the um, this number, you know, you could say do actually seven states and then it will actually learn in seven different in seven different rooms, right? It automatically puts the information into the network that actually is also capable of acting in seven different rooms. And this is the in in the network that I have, there was no input really to the network, right? It was just at every time sample, sample, sample. If you have a state, then you can also input, you say, hey network, I'm now in room number five. What is the best, uh, what is your estimate of the probabilities uh, based on which I make my choice in room number five? And then it will give you uh, an output of probabilities for all the different states, of, for all the different rooms in the casino. All this information will be stored somehow in these weights. And I don't even have to code up, you know, any indexing or anything. It's the same algorithm. It just has an input now. Okay. Um, again, sorry if it was a little bit too quick, but I guess um, you can engage with me in the comments if you have any questions. And I hope this was helpful. Take care.